One of the most common challenge requests I receive is for destroying drone packages. It's called Drones Eliminated. Destroy 10 enemy package delivery drones. And this is part of the score streak return fire challenges. Now there's quite a few ways you can do this, which I'll be covering in great detail in this video. One method will almost guarantee you complete this challenge in two games and possibly even in a single game. This is a limited time only opportunity, as you'll soon see. Worry not, however, as there's still a very easy way to destroy drone packages. It'll just take a little more time and effort. Now I'm sure everyone has seen a drone package in the game before. They can arrive in two different ways. They can either come straight down from the sky, which occurs on wide open maps, or if the owner calls one in when they're inside an area with no open roof, they'll drop down to eye level and fly at that range until they find the drop zone. Now as you'd assume, there's several ways to actually take out a drone package carrier. But you first have to know what you're aiming at. It looks as though most people will see a drone carrier fly by them and then shoot at it aimlessly. This is actually the worst thing you can do. Not only is it almost impossible to shoot down a drone carrier with bullets, but it's extremely difficult to hit the correct part. With the engineer perk equipped, the appropriate area that needs to be shot will be highlighted, as seen here. Now it is possible to shoot one with bullets, but only after it's been significantly weakened. So upon destroying a carrier drone, the package itself simply drops, and you'll be rewarded with the No Tip medal. Some people may assume that the care package itself gets destroyed, but this is false. It simply falls wherever the drone itself was destroyed at. So I went into a private match, and I tested every way imaginable to take out a drone package carrier. I'm obviously not going to show all these methods, as that would take forever. But I'll demonstrate a few. So first, all three launchers can destroy the drone, each with their own issues. The P-Law launcher is the weakest. It's the only launcher that requires more than one shot. And with the burst delay of the weapon itself, as well as the speed of the drone carrier, this is not ideal and you can cross this one off your list. The howitzer launcher can take out a drone in one shot, but you'll need to be up close and personal, which can prove to be fatal. The Spartan, however, has a lock-on mechanism that targets the drone. It can destroy the drone in one rocket, with the drawback being that if you're too close, the rocket can't properly follow and thus destroy the drone. Instead, it simply veers off course. But we'll come back to the Spartan launcher in just a bit. As for score streaks, it's possible to take out the drone carrier with quite a few streaks, but most of them aren't practical at all. The Scorchers is by far the best. If you couple in the fact that you can see the drone package on the call-in screen, you can almost always take it out provided you're fast enough. For rig payloads, most of them are far too slow or inaccurate to hit the moving drone carrier. There's one that reigns supreme, however, and that's Striker's Centurion. The Centurion is basically a portable EMP device, and as such, it'll instantly destroy the drone carrier when it reaches the proximity of the EMP effect. There's two issues, though. Number one, earning the payload comes slowly, and you may not have it when a package gets called in. Number two, you have to actually see the drone package or the drop zone for it to work, and the range of the EMP effect is limited. So there's one more way, which is by far the fastest and easiest, and surprisingly the most overlooked method. I have no doubt in my mind that once this video spreads, people will be claiming this idea as their own on Reddit in no time, with no mention of me at all. It's that good. And this method? The Jammer Grenade. Most people will assume that these just slow your movement and your vision, and that's it. This grenade is actually the equivalent of the EMP grenade in this game. One jammer grenade is all you need to dispose of a drone carrier. Not only does it only take one, but the throwing distance and the blast radius are both huge, which means you can lob this from a great distance and still hit your payload. The jammer grenade, believe it or not, is actually ideal for taking out smaller score streaks in one blow, such as the scarab or even the vulture. Now knowing this, a rare opportunity presents itself for almost instant success. As of the making of this video, Drop Zone is in the playlist rotation. Not only is this game mode ideal for several of the score streak challenges, but it makes drone packages so prevalent that this challenge is almost too easy. Now with that said, as with most new game modes in Infinite Warfare, it'll eventually be removed. Rest assured though, I have a second strategy up my sleeve. But first, the Drop Zone method. The class setup is simple. The Warfighter rig with the overdrive payload and the resupply trait. Next, you need two jammer grenades and then the engineer perk. That's it. 
Everything else is up to you. So each kill you make will resupply one jammer grenade, which can offer you a limitless supply of these mini EMP grenades. With vultures, scarabs, and other smaller score streaks prevalent, you'll be racking up a lot of score. But more importantly, every time the enemy captures the drop zone, enemy drone packages will come flooding in. One toss of a jammer grenade will net you with the no tip metal, which is precisely what we want. You can even utilize the overdrive payload to initiate crackhead pro speed, which will help you get into throwing distance faster. An ideal strategy is just to linger outside a drop zone until your teammates no longer hold it or the enemy takes it first. The moment the enemy captures it, an enemy drone package will spawn in. Once it gets close enough, you can easily take it out with your jammer grenades. And with the engineer perk equipped, you can get a huge jump start on where the package is coming in from. This will make it a lot easier to line up your jammer grenade throws. If you're playing on an enclosed map, such as Frontier, you'll see just how far the drone carrier has to travel, which means you can often catch it flying well before its intended destination. Not only will this get you a no-tip medal, but it drops the package right at your feet for an easy theft. Even if you don't have the engineer perk at your disposal, your minimap will still display the drone carrier red. You just won't be able to see it on your actual screen as glowing red. But you already know its intended destination, the drop zone point. Still though, knowing which direction the drone will fly into the drop zone makes things a lot smoother. Now as I mentioned earlier, a lot of score streaks will take out drone carriers as well. And since drop zone is all about getting free score streaks, you can utilize this to your advantage too. For instance, if you call in a Thor, simply target the current drop zone. If the enemy holds it or captures it, your missiles will easily earn you some no-tip medals. You can even use the Apex if you so desire. Now unfortunately, as I mentioned, this game mode won't be permanent. So if you're watching this video at the time when there's no drop zone, don't worry. I actually completed this challenge with the method I'm about to tell you. And yes, it does take a bit longer and it requires a bit more effort, but it's still completely doable. So the next method requires the Spartan Launcher. Unlike in the drop zone game mode, a normal drone package will be called in by an actual player and more often than not, away from where you currently are on the map. Most people retreat deep in their own spawn to call in the package. This means that even with the magical jammer grenade, you're going to be nowhere near the drop zone location at all. As I mentioned earlier, the Spartan launcher doesn't work up close. However, from long distances, it's perfect. All you have to do is stand a great distance away from wherever the drone package is being called in from, and this means that only open maps are ideal. Upon the drone getting called in, and provided you have the engineer perk equipped, you'll see the tiny carrier drone glowing orange high in the sky. You can then lock on and fire your rocket, which will arc straight down and destroy the drone every time. I tested every map in the game, and hands down, the most ideal map is on Frost. It's the A side flag that offers you a clearer sky than the C flag side. So if you can help it, try to ensure you and your teammates are spawning on this side of the map. If you just sit in this certain spot with your Spartan launcher out and looking up at the sky, you'd be amazed at how many drone packages get called in each match. You can even watch the scoreboard closely. If you see an enemy doing exceptionally well, chances are they may call in a drone package. More often than not, a UAV will be called in immediately prior to a drone package. So anytime you hear a UAV get called in, be on guard for the package to follow. Even with the engineer perk equipped, Seeing the drone carrier is incredibly hard up in the sky. But if you're already scoped in and aiming towards the sky when you hear it get called in, you'll hear the lock-on mechanism beep. And this is extremely useful for locking on quickly. So you can do this strategy on a majority of wide open maps. But a lot of the maps have a lot of obstructive buildings or objects in your line of sight towards the sky. But you'd be surprised at the rocket's trajectory more often than not. Sometimes when you think it won't make it towards the package, it defies all odds and zigzags its way there. If you play round-based objective modes such as Domination or even Reinforce, the start of a round is when most people call in drone packages. Not only this, but you'll already be at opposite ends of the map. So the moment a new round begins, whip out your launcher and aim towards the sky. You're almost guaranteed to get a no-tip medal in these situations. Now if you happen to have a payload or a score streak handy as well, don't forget you can also utilize those. In particular, the Scorchers and the Centurion. As soon as you hear a drone package get called in, bring up the Scorchers minimap and target the area where you see the drone package. I'd say 9 times out of 10 I was fast enough to get a no-tip medal with this method. 
Likewise, if you're on a smaller map such as Frontier or Genesis and you can actually see the drop zone, call in your Centurion near it and you'll be instantly rewarded the moment the drone carrier comes in contact with the EMP effect. So yes, while this method with the Spartan launcher is more time consuming, I'd say it's just as easy as the jammer grenade method. In fact, without the drop zone game mode, the jammer grenade is pretty much worthless for this challenge since you're going to be at opposite ends of the map from where the drone package is being called in at. The jammer grenade is only ideal in drop zone since you know where and when each package will be. So again, if drop zone is available, use my jammer grenade strategy to more than likely complete this challenge in two games or less. If drop zone isn't available, use my research to your advantage. Look towards the sky at the opposite end of the map from where the enemy calls the package in from. The Spartan will lock onto the arriving drone carrier and follow it towards the ground, where it'll then collide and reward you with a no-tip medal. And to make things even easier with both methods, make sure you have the engineer perk equipped. So the next time you read about someone struggling with the drones eliminated challenge, be sure to pass on my heavily researched guide, which will give them the proper tips to get the no-tip.